Stop YouTubing golf lessons. Again, you're looking for swing tips that have nothing to do with your game. So here's what I want you to do. Go and click the link below. You'll be taken to an artificially intelligent golf instructor that will customize drills based upon your skill level, your swing faults, as well as your body type. And again, this program is 100% free. It absolutely blew my mind. It includes lessons from major champions, top PGA Tour coaches, swing speed specialists, as well as top doctors create a prescribed blueprint for your game. Click the button below you know, really tickled pink to hear that the short irons have gotten substantially better based yeah. on getting to a deeper primary tilt. So I'd love yeah. to watch you hit a couple. And then okay. we'll add, because uh, I feel like it's appropriate, stack a deeper layer of understanding. And so what's exciting about today, if the posture does in fact look good, you know how we talk about, you know, the, that secret move of the backswing, that scapula glide that we talk about, which is mm -hmm. if the blade moves two inches back, the hands move a little bit more, the club moves a little bit more, gets everything into motion. On top of that, if I start off the golf swing with that pulling right. action of the centripetal force, mm -hmm. we're also gonna see some elevation or some width as a result of that. So we can go through the nuances of how important that pulling action is on the way back. There is also a secret two inch move in the downswing as well, which okay. we're gonna talk about. And oh, so, cool. So that, that's the stuff that gets actually really, really cool because before I feel like I have the opportunity to, to bring certain things up, I have to create what's called patient compliance, where we have to see that this is the direction. Um, I'm committed to it. I see the results. Some things need to be polished and tweaked a little bit to fit our understanding, as well as the live condition. Because primary tilt itself is a fundamental. The degree of it is not. The okay. same way, if I'm, a, if I'm in a bunker, I need to get substantially more into my primary tilt. If I have a ball that is above my feet, I'm actually going to get into a less substantial primary tilt and I might choke down a little bit. If I have a ball that is, you know, below my feet substantially and I'm up on top of a cliff somewhere, where you, mm -hmm. stand, you can see this, if I'm on top of a cliff and the ball is all the way down there, yeah. you have to get into a much deeper primary tilt. Okay. You get down into yeah. it. So, yeah, okay. the thighs back, that's the fundamental. The degree, there's your variable. The same way, secondary tilt. The actual idea that the angle between the, the sternum and the navel forms a line, that's fundamental. You know, it, the amount or dictation of it is not. Primary okay. tilt, rough hill lies, uh, wet conditions, driver. Negative tilt from downhill lies, tight lies, deep rough, etc. So this is okay. where the variables are. If I'm hitting more of a draw, I might want to set up with more positive tilt. If I'm hitting a low cut, I'm going to set up with a little bit of negative tilt to influence the angle of attack. Okay. So the that we learn the rules, we learn how to slightly adjust them a little bit. One that makes 100%. That makes perfect sense. Awesome. So, so that, that's the stuff that we want to get past first in what was last time our first session. Um, now we get to go down the rabbit hole together. All right. That sounds great. Which is fun. So let's go ahead and watch you hit a couple with your okay. physical assistant. And yep. I'll give the phone to Chase. Perfect. I'll just hit, hit the one in my hand right now. Okay. So, how are you doing, Chase? Good, how are you? Fantastic. Um, you got a new driver? I got, yeah, I got a new driver in Fairway Woods. What would what, you pick up? Well, um, my dad's buddy, um gave him a gave him um 2017 mizuno clubs okay uh, fairway clubs to give to me and they're, they're pretty neat i don't have them right now but they're really cool and, and you're hitting you're hitting them okay are you have you hit them yet uh yeah i'm hitting them okay the shaft's a little too um a little stiff uh, yeah a little stiff so i'm, I'm sure you can get those That's so um Ms. Elliot, come over, take a look. Uh, Dad. He said to come over and take okay. a look. Perfect. Yeah. As, as I promised, it only takes me one to be able to take a look what we need to talk about today. So, today what we're going to discuss, um, you can see the screen, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today is the 
two inch secret move of the downswing. And I say secret just because more people need to talk about this. So what we see here is something that we see super common for almost everybody, which is, let me go ahead and pull up this, annotate it. So we see very little lower body rotation through your golf swing. You know, you're not so much standing up, but that lower body is just not clearing. So we're losing quite a bit of speed by which that lower body is not creating any rotational forces in your golf swing, right? It, everything's basically happening from the upper body. And you're a strong guy, you can get away with it. But we don't want to make it so that you cannot access the hamstring and the glutes more efficiently. So, Definitely. so back swing looks great. You know, we talked about the scapular glide, you've seen that in the videos. You're doing a great job isolating that. The club looks like it's in a really good spot at the top. Okay, great. What we talk about, and this is by design on the program, I don't talk that much about the downswing. Again, by design. The reason why is I need somebody to go ahead and put together the work by which we can even talk about it first. You know, if, if you're not in the right posture, we cannot have the conversation we're about to talk about now. You know, if you are rounded from the shoulders, you're not rotating well, we have bigger issues in the downswing. And so there is a secret two inch move of the downswing. And so what we're gonna explain is once you get the posture down, if you master four inches, a two inch move of the backswing and a two inch move of the downswing, that's all you have to worry about for the rest of your life to hit a consistent golf shot. Elevation, for me. <laughs> flexion, 100%. All the other stuff we're gonna throw on top of it, you know, the elevation, the flexion, the pressure shift, all that is icing on the cake. You know, controlling the different amount of tilt to hit different shots, further icing on the cake. That's what's going to give you mastery of ball flight and shot shaping. That stuff is not what is required to hit a good golf shot. Okay. So I want you to take a look and say that there is, even after impact, no rotation of your lower body here. Even though I'm sure you're trying to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do we want to take a look at real quick? Let me go and stop share. Um, let me move this down a little bit. This is where stuff gets actually really, really cool. Um, and I'm kind of chopping at the bit, actually. So here's full body. So if I get here, if I get into my golf posture, which we're going to have you do in a second, okay? Here you are into a hinge. We understand that we might be, have been getting to a little bit too deep of a hinge with our driver, or it might not need to be quite as deep. We're still over the ankles. We're still hinging the thighs back. We might have been doing it a bit excessively, which is very short irons were great. Bunker shots might have been awesome. Yeah. Right? Yeah, really good at bunker. Yeah. Because, Andy, you need to get a little bit deeper yet in the bunker. And so when it comes to the downswing, let me go ahead and explain something real quick. Let me bring this down. So we know that the order of operations is we want to shift our weight and get the lower body to rotate. Right? Yep. So there's a couple of things I keep up my sleeve just for the sake of keeping things up my sleeve. Um, to, to save it for the people that I consider to be in my inner circle. Okay. Awesome. You guys. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let me bring the camera down. Literally, this is going to make you among, you know, the, 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 the upper echelon of golf society that knows this idea. So Chase, you're already like 18 steps ahead of the game here. So... <laughs> We know that now we want to shift our pressure back to our left side. We know we don't want to hang on our back foot making a golf swing necessarily. Yep. So we shift our pressure to our left heel on the way down, that pressure shift down. What happens from there? Because what I want you both to feel that if you get to your golf posture and you maintain the flex in the left knee, how much can your lower body rotate? Not very much at all. Not very much at all. I want you to go ahead and try that. Yeah, we can try it together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's very restrictive. Very restrictive. Okay, so everyone says, looking, look, taking a look at things from the ground up, that we have a plant into our left ankle, and then we're expecting the lower body to rotate. I call this the conversation of the missing link. There is a critical joint that exists between the ankle and the hip that we have to talk about. What do you think that joint is? The knee. The knee, 100%. So for as long as you just experience, you maintain flex in that knee, the lower body is not gonna clear. You could be working with a coach for four years, you know, trying to keep your butt on the line, 
yes, the posture is important in that as a way of creating an opportunity for that to happen. But the left knee has to do something. And so the left knee, if it works properly in just a two inch capacity, does everything looking to accomplish the downswing. So when I say straighten the left knee, because we don't want to keep it bent, I don't need to straighten it this way. That's what happens with the weights and the balls of your feet. If the quads are. So if I go here, let me roll this up. I'm not ashamed or afraid of farmer's hand because I've not been outside all that much. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, not a good thing. It's okay. My, my wife won't let me wear sandals, so it's all right. <laughs> you and I are in the same boat, brother. Um, so if my knee moves two inches back or straightens two inches, okay, just does that. What does my lower body just do? It automatically opened. Right. If I hear, once I pressure shift into my left side, if my left knee goes back, okay, watch my lower body does. Okay. I'm going to show you from a partial angle as well so you can see that. Once I pressure shift, if this knee goes back, it's, it's not. It's almost, yeah. It's almost like it can't help but open at that point. If the knee straightens, the hips have to open. The origin of motion, what causes the lower body to rotate, is not the lower body rotating. It's not the, the hips or anything else. It's that left knee going back. And that's why it's so important for us to get in the right posture first. Because if I'm on the balls of my feet, my quads engaged, I'm going to want to come up. Which, again, based on what we see with you right now, you're not really coming up and out of your shot. You're just keeping the flex in the knee. Therefore, it's static. Okay. That yes. Okay. So what we're going to work on in a second, and just to explain the point, you know, people have struggled keeping their backside on that hip line or whatever it is they want to call it, um, the colloquial, the butt line. I actually, if that knee goes back, that goes deeper. Oh yeah, yeah, I see that. I do an even better job staying on it. What this also does is it creates rotational and vertical forces in tandem through impact. So all that ground reaction where people are talking about being so important, this is what creates that. And so, that's where I say, we have to take a look at joints, segment by segment from the ground up. First of all, we have to pressure shift. Secondly, yes, the lower body has to clear, but it only clears if the knee straightens back. And that's why I know as you watch the videos, um, we talk about the differences between chipping and pitching. And we say, yes, chipping is a rotation of the upper body back, lower body through. To be super technical, a pitch is a rotation of my right scapula back two inches, and the straightening of my left knee, two inches. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay. I so see. What I want you to do is I want you to head back over to the range. Okay. Um, and I want you to get into your golf posture. Okay. Without a golf club. So I want, okay. you're gonna put your arms across your chest. Okay. Yep. 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 And all I want you to do, okay. So Chase can get behind them just a little bit more. Just a little bit more to the. Oh. Yep. So all I want you to do is rotate back with the scapula. Good. Now all I want you to do is shift the weight to the left side and feel that left knee straighten behind you. Much better. Yep. So so question, coach. Yes. Do you do you have the sensation that you're pushing off? of the right foot to get to load that side? Uh, that stance with the you just had looked a little bit wide. That's why it felt like it had that feeling. Okay. You, you were touched wide and set up. So all I want you to do, um, even before focusing on the rotation of the upper body, get into golf setup, okay? I just want you to, to feel that left knee go back. Okay. So just focus on the back. So it, it's, it's, if the knee goes back towards something behind you, that hip is going to have to rotate. So let's okay, go ahead, perfect. So, so let's go ahead and isolate that real quick. Okay. So 
So Chase, if you can go a little bit more uh, down the line, so a little bit more to your right. Perfect, right there, awesome. So all I want you to do, so don't worry about the backswing. I just want you to straighten, so go back to setup. Just straighten, good, awesome. Do that again. Awesome. Really good there. So what I want you to do is I want you to go and grab a club. I want you to go ahead and, beautiful. I want you to rotate back. And all I want you to do is focus on that left knee straightening back on the way down. Awesome. So th these are the moments in which people say they love me and these are when things get really, really rewarding. So I want you to come on over and take a quick gander at this. Okay. I said this is the moment where you love me. <laughs> This is where stuff gets fun for me. Yeah. Try um, so at your only focus when it comes to origin is, was just the left knee on the last swing, correct? Yes. Okay. So this is where stuff gets fun. And by fun, I mean funky. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Whoa. Yeah, it, 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 it is ridiculous. And it helps you kick in your That's head. why it is the secret ancient Egyptian lost labyrinth of the downswing. 100%. Key. This is exactly how they built the pyramids. <laughs> chicken wing, Dad. <laughs> yeah, and Chase is right. You don't see my chicken wing there. No, listen, you're forced to chicken wing if you don't rotate. The hips cannot <laughs> rotate if the left knee stays flexed. <laughs> Right. That's fantastic. And look, I maintain my spine tilt there yep. as well. Yep. Because if the left knee straightens back, you're maintaining yourself on the hip line that much better. If anything, you might even get deeper into it. But I'd be pushing okay. everyone to say that's going to happen right away. More importantly, we want to empower you with the understanding that this is what we have to do. So your, your, <clears throat> your downswing thought then for this portion of my progression is simply to get that get into my left side and then straighten that knee and so what we're not, yes it is 100 percent correct okay what we're not saying just so we're on the same page i'm not saying snap your left knee it doesn't right. have to happen fast it has to happen first okay major distinction there because if you think about it you're if i'm swinging um, let me use my charging cable. So if I have this charging cable spinning around in a circle, right? The one spot I would not want to catch my finger is at the very end, right? You know, it's not right. going to hurt it's not gonna hurt all if I go like this, right? Sure. And so, of course, in terms of the radial speed, the, the angular speed rather, if I go from here to there, this point and this point have moved the same number of degrees. This is moving a whole lot faster than this is. Right. In the golf swing, if I had the choice between being, my hand being struck by the end of the club head versus somebody's hand making a golf swing, mm -hmm. I'd, rather, I'd rather them hit, the, hit their hand than hit the golf club. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, if the club head's moving at 100 miles an hour, my hand's moving substantially slower than the club head, okay? Which means that my torso itself is moving slower than my hands, which means that the knee itself does not move very fast. This is what gets everything else moving. Okay. So it's one of those things, the knee doesn't have to get here and you know, snap it back as hard as I can. It's actually a very gentle process by which we're developing or accumulating power sequentially in the downswing. So if I'm here, I shoot pressure. For me, this is actually a very gradual move that creates a lot of flash speed and vertical force through impact. Okay, so, so Eric, you, <clears throat> on the downswing, you are putting, you are shifting your weight first. Yes, it's a pressure. Out of your turn, 
right? Yep. So you're, you, so I've cl completed my turn. I've got all my weight on my right hip pocket. Yes. I now then shift my knees forward a little bit, and then that's when I begin the straightening of that left knee. Yes, hundred percent. Yes. And okay. so the goal okay. for you is because there's no deficiency from what we saw in previous videos for you with the pressure shift. You're not hanging on the back foot necessarily. Well, I think that for you, we could focus strictly on starting off in the pitching action where there's no pressure shift that's substantial. I just want to see you hit a couple pitches in closure. We're focusing on the two-inch move of the scapula and the two-inch move of the knee straightening. And let's just see what happens okay. systematically from there. But it's okay. really important to see the visual where we hear it, we see it, we feel it. Those are three critical pieces. When it comes to this for you is that big threshold by which we're going to jump when it comes to seeing finally that left butt cheek on the way down, which we've never seen okay. before because you've no. been the left knee. Yeah. That Me meanwhile, my 13-year-old has hit some of the best irons I've ever seen him strike while you and I have been talking. <laughs> which is worth its weight in gold to me. I, I think Chase is going to pay for this lesson. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm teasing you, buddy. Okay, video me, okay? Well, 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 by him holding the camera, he's earning his keep, right? Yeah. There you go. Just a pitch. Yeah, just a pitch. Yeah. I did that with no effort. Yeah. That's how far I was hitting out with that. Dad, it looks so much better. That's no effort, Chase. So I want you to come take a look because we're talking about two swings. Yeah. We're talking about two swings in, right? Yes. That's awesome. Well, and it was an effortless swing that I just hit 140 yards. I mean, wow. it's crazy. And so that's where I say everything we're talking about on top of this is just the icing on the cake. You know, the different yeah. tilts. Um, you know, by you doing your homework in terms of getting to a primary tilt, typical for me, number two is learning how to get the scapula glide down. Lesson number three is improving the lower body in terms of what actually happens in the downswing. So because you've already watched the videos, we could kind of bypass that to step three. Once you go through these pieces, then we're going to add some deeper layers of polish to the backswing. We're going to make a bigger turn. We're going to elevate more, create more trail arm flexion. But when it comes to the baseline piece, if you're getting ready to play a member guest in the next two or three days, mm -hmm. this is something you can rely on. Because literally yeah. all we're saying, if you want to become a proficient golfer, there are three things on your plate. Primary tilt, scapula glide takeaway, left knee strings on the way down and you can play around the golf doing that and based okay. on the shot that you just hit you could probably break 80 doing that wow wow that's awesome makes yeah, sense I'm, yeah i'm so i'm giddy right now <laughs> <laughs> you and I both, listen, these are the moments that i wait for i love is, it no look, 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 this is why i love what i do because you can literally take somebody by the hand and show them at, to your point, how to build a pyramid. Yeah. There, there should be no secrets like this in the golf swing. There should be work in terms of understanding that there's a process I need to go through, but it shouldn't be this mystical thing that says, oh my goodness, how does Justin Thomas rotate his lower by the way he does? It's not just because he puts in the hours of work. There has to be something that happens that creates the motion, whether it be in incorrect elements of posture where your body is in its own way or what we saw in your downswing where your left knee was literally in your own way. Mm -hmm. so, but this guy bears no semblance to, you know, where you were, you know, previously at all. Oh my God. Yeah. Not even close. For sure. <laughs> this, this is the stuff that I live for. If that makes sense. So when it comes to well, your... I know that. Oh, yeah. So I'm happy that we found some progress with the short irons, just to recap. The stuff that we had to polish is we were perhaps creating too much primary tilt. And it's very easy for us to say, okay, we, we can temper that a little bit. 
you know, especially when it comes to driver, you don't need to have quite a deep primary tilt. That's also why we see a worse posture in somebody's putting stroke and more of a prevalence of the, of the yips. Because the putter is shorter, it forces us to get into a deeper primary tilt. You know, this would be also okay from the sand, but if I'm hitting a driver from here, yeah, the toes would be well up. Yeah. This might be excessive for that. And these are the nuances that I typically say for these kind of conversations, um, just because people at this point typically bring up, well, what about club fitting? And mm -hmm. this conversation happens. You know, I am by no means a club fitter. Um, and that's where if somebody says, well, what about Bryson DeChambeau, which is typically the next part of the conversation. Having <laughs> clubs. This is where, yes, that makes sense. Where you can either rely on, you know, hinging until the club is sold properly, where if you have a more club that's more upright, you might be a more up here, even though the weight is certainly still back, it's fine, still neutral. The issue with going single leg, if I can bring it up, and I, I spent a little bit of time with Bryson, uh, met him through his, through his brother at the Masters when he was an amateur, and then also when he was going through his transition with the whole side saddle business and putting. Uh, oh, yeah. Way from that, I think that was the Valspar two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. But notwithstanding what he's doing with the ice metric training and getting, you know, up, if you will, the conversation of single length clubs is intriguing, but it requires a lot of due diligence. So what do I mean by that? Here I have an eight iron, and let me go ahead and grab a nine iron. So if I were to have eight iron, nine iron, okay? We have four degrees of loft separating the two. If all of a sudden I took my eight iron, right here, and cut it down to a nine iron length, this eight iron would go shorter, right? Yes, you're right. If I had my six iron or my five iron or my four and I cut it down to an eight iron, a nine iron length, all these clubs subsequently will go far shorter. So if I just cut the shafts down, uh, yes, my spine angle will stay the same, but I have a gapping issue. So in mm -hmm. physics, Chase, I'm going to test you on this. <laughs> oh. uh, force, okay? Force okay. equals mass times acceleration. Okay? You, you ready for this? Acceleration. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I'm spinning this cord, right, do you think this is going to hurt more than this will? Which it hurts more, the longer length or the shorter length? Probably the longer length. Why? It's going to hurt more. Because it more. More speed. Yeah. Yep. So the longer the shaft, the more speed there are going to be, right? So if I have a club that's longer, we have changed the acceleration of the club. So if you cut every club to be the same length, the acceleration then is the same. So what do you have to change? So if force equals mass and acceleration, if the acceleration stays the same, you have to change the mass. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so all of a sudden, my four iron, I have to add mass to it to create the proper gapping. Okay. If, so if I were to throw a whole bunch of plugs of tungsten on my driver, my driver shaft is gonna play a lot weaker because it just got heavier. Mm. See the problem? I do, yep. You know, if, you're, if you're changing the mass of each club, the frequency and the flex point of each shaft is going to change. That's yep. why Jason has had a historical issue, self-admittingly, controlling the spin and trajectory of all of his clubs because he's forced to change literally the shaft on every club. Nor wow. can I say, I got a set of X100s here, and by changing the length, I can keep the mass of the club the same. And so that's where, you know, the idea that he has regarding... You know, it certainly, change, it certainly keeps one variable constant, which is your spine angle, which right. again, is a bad thing. What it can say is for the lay golfer saying, I seem to get into a little bit of a deeper primary tilt, I'll be fine. That also is appropriate. However, what we see with Bryson is kind of a cherry picking of this idea because mm -hmm. his driver certainly is not the same length as his eight iron, mm -hmm. right? His legs right. are also shorter. So he has a range of the clubs that are similar. There's like gotcha. those four iron to gap wedge, which are the I same. see. And so 
it's one of those things where does he keep his posture the same for everything? No. You know, he's a little bit more upright with driver than he is with a wedge. Right. And so for him, even him, who touts single length everything, is not truly single length. You know, again, this is not a new idea. There's actually a set of golf clubs from Bobby Jones in um, at Augusta National where he has a set of golf clubs of his that were all single length. Oh, really? Interesting. And so, again, these, these are not new ideas, um, but what we want to take a look at is what are the effects. The same thing with you in terms of the full swing. Yes, we saw that the lower body did not rotate. What was the effect? You know, we, ha we had to flip. But why yeah. wasn't by not rotating was a missing link of the left knee. And that's where, you know, in terms of your competition regarding club fitting, yes, you might want to go and get fit now, that, now because you are into a better primary tilt and we're giving you a tool by which you're able to stay in posture to begin with, which is the left knee straightening. Before that, if you got into dynamic fitting, because you were not rotating, you coming coming up out of it, they would have fit you for clubs that were much too upright anyhow. Yeah. Yep. So if you already went down the rabbit hole, that's where if you said initially, yeah, my clubs are slightly toe up, I'd say, well, probably because you got fit in a period of time where you're early extending coming up and out of your posture. So it might be an appropriate time to take a look at that. Um, okay. But again, that, that would be the cares you for the horse to worry about the fitting first, if that makes sure. sense. Totally. Any questions? No, I'm excited, man. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. So, so, yeah, really work on straightening that, yeah, getting in proper lean position and then straightening that knee is kind of my homework next week or so. Okay. 100%. Then we'll reconnect from there. Okay. Uh